Hi and welcome to another Type With Me. This week I want to talk about TypeScript shorthands that you should know about and that are coming very handy when you're writing TypeScript. But everything comes with a price, also these shorthands, so uh, you need to find the balance between what is handy for you and for your colleagues and what is handy um, for the tool projects and the readability of it, right? So let's see what these TypeScript shorthands are. So imagine that we have the following thing. We have a function here, right? And we have a variable one and a variable two. And of course, we want to check if our variable two has some values, right? If it doesn't have any value, then we need to use the default value. So for that, I want to do something like this. I want to write something like that to show you. And then I want to do this. Add variable one would be, of course, this is important in TypeScript. I'm going to put that as an optional. And then here we do add and then hello. World. I'm going to put a space right here. So this will just work and it just uh, going to accept that. Of course, another thing that I want to do is here, just put hello, right? And then you will see that it just does hello and then default value. Um, so, all right, let's test this out. First of all, I need to save this. And then of course here I can do dino run next dot right and then you see here hello world and then here we have hello default value right if i do this and i add here comma zero it will also just do hello and then zero right so here we have hello and then zero right another thing that we could do right now is the following thing it's a little bit the same like what we have already right because but i just want to have something like a logical nullish assignment i want to show you that so what we do here is we just copy and then we just paste that I want to do something like this. I want to do adding. And of course here, I'm also going to change it to adding. And so the logical, logical knowledge assignment is very easy, actually. It's just like this. I'm just going to remove this one. We're just still going to use variable two here. And then here, I'm going to do this, right? So it's just a, very, a, a, a step further, right? To, to really make it more compact and more, more restrict, but it's just doing the same. It checks if variable two has something in it, and if it doesn't have something in it, it will just assign that to where it's default value, right? So if you execute that, you will see that it's just the same like we had before, and you will see that he just is doing the same thing like we had before. So another chart hand that's very important and something that I use a lot is the constructor shorthand, right? So the old way of writing classes is that we have some kind of the following thing. We have some privates there, then we have constructor, but of course we can very easily do it like that. We can just add private or public right here and then just on. So if we have here public, course this one is being accessible as a public value 
out of our classes, right? But this is a very great thing. It's something that I really can recommend you to use uh, like that. It will make your classes much more compact. And of course, uh, also for readability, it's not a problem because you can just go to the constructor and see which fields are private or public there. And, and, and a great way to do so uh, when you are developing within your team. Another one that's very much known is a ternary operator. Um, it's something that's very common and very used within the JavaScript world, right? So I suppose you already know that. But imagine you have something like this. You have here uh, this one, right? Variable two, for example. And then we are just going to check if that variable is divided by two, right? And if so, we say it's even, and otherwise we say it's not even, right? You can also put five, for example, and then it just checks that out. But a lot of code, a lot of lines of code, right? And we can make it a little bit shorter. So if we are going to do that, we can very easily do it like this, right? So we can do it like this, right? And then we say is even on the ternary approach and we are doing it like that here we have just our um, our condition right and then we say if it's true we say it's yes and otherwise we say no right so that's a very great approach to make it a little bit more compact a lot of people know how to read this so i really recommend it if you can make it a little bit uh, smaller your if else cases another one that's very great is this one right if you have an expression and for example this expression is already falsy then it will not evaluate the other ones right so you can very shorthand that as well uh, also to assign certain default values it's a lot this this is been used a lot right so it will be see you will see if the um, the expression is true and if it's true it will just use that otherwise it will use the other one and so on you can very easily chain that and take that to your advantages another one that's not much known is the double bit with bitwise not operator and i know why not a lot knows about that because we try to stay away from bits right i try to stay away from bits because yeah it's too close towards uh, what the computer is good at and not so close at what we are good at right but okay it's great to notice and to know how this works now let's make that into work right so for example we have a number three dot eight and you want to make another number out of it well then we can use this and also this one right so let's see how this works i'm going to save this and if we run this you will see that we have for y minus four and for true and for z uh, three Right. If you want to have, for example, a floor x, you can very easily uh, do that. Floor x by just doing um, or using this one, right? And then, of course, doing a double bitwise operator. And then you can very easily and shorthanded floor your member. And of course, I need to I need to do a console to show you console dot dot block floored And in my opinion, it's a very nice one to know about and to use also in a certain sense. But of course, uh, your other colleagues need to know this also otherwise they will say hey what is that and i know this one is not uh, widely known so far so so another one is object property assignment so imagine that we have something like this we have here it 
a type user and we have properties name, age and ID and we have also variables name, age and ID. So in the old way we needed to do it like this. We need to say okay my user is a user which has a name and that's also the name variable right and it has a property age and it has here the age variable and so on so we need to do it like that but within the new way we can very easily do it like this right we can just say okay we want to have here name age and id and it's that's just the property but also the variable that we defined above this makes it a little bit shorthand it's easy to read and to uh, consume as well so i can also recommend this way to use uh, this TypeScript shorthand or JavaScript shorthand because this also works within JavaScript um, uh, as well. Another TypeScript shorthand is the shorthand for arrow functions. We can the return type for arrow functions. So we can remove the return here and we can very easily remove the brackets and then have this shorthand notation for um, our arrow function return. Um, Right. So I can also recommend to use this shorthand, it's very handy to do so. Another shorthand could be that we have default values right here. So if you want to use that, well, do it. It's very practical, very great for your uh, application. It's a, it's a shorthand that is possible from ECMAScript 6, so from there on you can very easily use uh, defaults within your uh, function. So you don't need to be in TypeScript, you can very easily use it also in JavaScript, these default values within your uh, functions. Another very handy shorthand is that you can make from any type, from any uh, variable a boolean, and you can do so as follow. Just put two exclamation marks beforehand and then it will just make a boolean out of it all right so that's also something that's very great to know um when we run this out we will see that we have true false false and true like it's uh, being uh, set there so the first one of course is true because it just exists the other one is a false because it's a string but it's an empty string the other one is also false because it's a zero right and the last one is a true because it's just an object so this shorthand can become very handy when you really need to have a boolean there and you want to assure that you have a boolean just use these two exp exclamation marks before your uh, variable and you are sure that you have a boolean written there so another one that comes in very handy is the destructing on spread operators so here we have an object and we have a name in ancient country and we want to assign it to uh, const name age and country there well the old, old way of doing it is just defining true uh, three um, variables there name age and country and then just uh, take that out of that object right but the new way is just using the uh, destructing and spread operators and so we are doing it like that it's so something that's very useful uh, it takes a while to really uh, catch that how to use it right but it's a very handy thing to uh, use for example if you want to say hey the first thing is just first name and i just want to have that as a first name and then you can just do it like this right you can just say okay i want to have property name and i want to assign it to const first name so you can do it like that as well it's much shorter it's much easier to do so um, and to repeat afterwards it's also very easy to apply that rule right uh, the same thing can be done with uh, arrays and with tuples um, so definitely check that out uh, destructing and spread operators are very handy when you're writing code and i would really recommend to use it so i just uh, explained to you some TypeScript shorthands 
I hope you found it useful. I hope you will use it into your projects. Uh, certain things I can recommend, other things are just nice to know but are less important to apply. Right, so uh, thank you very much. Please subscribe to my channel and give me a thumbs up and I will support you and guide you with more videos in the next weeks, months and maybe even years. Bye!